up, everybody? I am Evie Star, and I am here with Kimberly. And do you prefer Jason or Junior? Either way, usually Junior on stage or uh, to the fans, but my full name is Jason Rufus Sewell Junior. So, uh, so they're them, all in there. Yeah, any one of those you want to pick is uh, is good for you. All right. Well, what do your friends call you? Jason. Then I'll call you Jason. How about that? All right. So just so you, did, in case you didn't catch that, that's Kimberly and Jason, and they are one eyed doll. How are you guys doing tonight? Good. Great. Ready to play in Pensacola? Yeah. Rain is has um, let up a little bit, so <laughs> it's been pouring rain since we've been here. Yeah. yeah but, um, Jason and I were just talking about that last time the band that's headlining opened, or for they played a show here. It flooded. And like everybody was stuck here all night long. Nice. So it was pretty insane. So luckily, yes, thank God, we don't have paddles on a call tonight. So you know. Not yet. <laughs> so you guys have had a lot going on. I was reading, and you have so many awards that you guys have won recently, and you did it all yourself. Please tell me how you became who you are right now. Um, how did you come up with this vision and get to the place where you are? And what steps can people take to become? You've been described as the most inspirational group of the 21st century, so. <laughs> um, I mean, there, there wasn't really a, a vision involved or, like, thinking about how we're going to put this together. It just sort of slowly developed over time, and we just... It's just one day at a time with us, really. It's, I started out as an acoustic singer-songwriter, and... Um, kind of naturally ended up forming a band and hit the road and really just worked very hard so did a, a lot of uh, touring a lot I've a noticed. lot of touring you guys are always out and that is so amazing that yeah. we always get the chance to see you but it's got to be so exhausting too thanks yeah so, it's, well, it's nicer now that we have like an agency and we've got this cool bus and a crew and, and a publicist and it wasn't always table. like that though Standby Records uh, Standby Records is uh, who we used to put, to release our last album which is yeah um, so I was just going to mention that um, something that we do and I, I ran a recording studio for many years for like 10 years and so I I was able to uh, get to know a lot of bands and, and the struggles they went through. And something that we do is that when an opportunity comes along, we take it. And even if it's scary, even if it means that we sacrifice everything in our life to do it. We sell it, things. Yeah. We have to get out of our leases. Yeah, and a lot of... A lot of come any other fears. And I, how does it become... Like, I, sometimes I feel, for example, like... I want something so bad, and I don't understand what's holding me back, but yet in the back of my mind, I do. How do you get past It's scary. That? It's scary to go out the there and do that. Just have to jump in. Yeah. I mean, just jump you... into that pool of lava and see what happens, you know. right? See and and uh, a lot of my friends' bands or bands that I've worked with in the past, you know, they would have opportunities, but you could see they were they, they were too scared to take them. They felt like, oh, well, I've got pets, or I have my job, or I have these things holding me, my family, and Girl all of friends. these things. Well, you know, it's, it's just, uh, you just have to understand that if this is the lifestyle you want to have, it's almost always going to be not as glamorous as, you, as it looks from the yeah. outside. It's all of this... Uh, <laughs> it is never as glamorous as yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of sacrifice and, and a massive amount of work. And it well, for us, and, it has been. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people start out with a bunch of money or support, even just family support. Um, that's that's not how I started. I started by digging stuff out of the trash and figuring out how to make merchandise with it. Um, it was, you know, I did it the long, hard way, and I don't recommend it to everyone. Um, but you did it. But, you know, I just sort of pieced it together, you know. And uh, Well, I, I just, I didn't feel like I had a whole lot else going for me. I'm in a terrible waitress. <laughs> I'll tell you that. I, uh, I didn't I didn't really enjoy housekeeping. I was I was a maid, I was a waitress, I worked in a factory, um, I was a teacher. And I <sighs> Did you just feel like you weren't meant to be ordinary? I don't know. I mean I mean I know that may come off as kind of hockey, but there's just something inside of you that I can see that obviously a lot of others can too that's special. And that you were meant for something more than a Walmart job or a housekeeping job or a, 
Well, I mean, I don't think it's anything more than those jobs. It's just a different kind of job. And I just, I have like less of a sense of shame for doing <laughs> stupid things in front of people, maybe, that helps. How did you get to there then? Because a lot, I, I, see, I could talk to you guys like it's nothing, but try to get me to talk to that thing when nobody's looking and there's no one there. That's hard. I, I know I that's hard. Yeah, <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> what in the world am I supposed to say? Yeah. No, it's but hard. How do, you, how do you conquer all that? Though, just to, it's really hard, especially, I know you shouldn't be concerned about other people's really opinions of you if you know you're doing right, but I mean. Well, if you're a performer, you're kind of basing your whole thing on other people's opinion of you, if we're really being honest. I mean, we're doing it for ourselves because we enjoy doing it. But the feeling of, of performing for an amazing audience who's reciprocating your energy and doing the thing, um, like that is so much different from playing to an empty room. And we all know that. We all know that 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 that, that uh, uh, anxiety of small crowds based on yeah. I mean, you know, it's so you want it's for performance. We're doing this for that. Uh, reciprocal energy if that's not there it feels terrible yes. even if you're playing songs that you really love it just doesn't feel as good when people aren't bringing it you know they back they have to feed the energy right back at you some people ask me how do you think these bands sing these same songs for 25 years I'm like because the crowd gives them the energy right back at yeah, you yeah that's and a good, it just that's a good feeds thing. your soul I mean how could they not want to sing their songs yeah and hear people chanting totally speaking of you guys are doing a cover of Depeche Mode which um, what can we expect from that cover as far as the, I'm not sure if I can articulate the Production? Story. No, like, okay, Lacuna Coil did a cover of that same song several years ago. Is it going to be dark and creepy? Because they're so... It's, uh, well, I, I can say that the, um... You know, the original is like an 80s yes, new wave kind of synth pop song. And um, like and this one's more, uh, we, we wanted to go a little more heavy and, and rock, uh, rock punk, punk rock with it. And it so, sounds like I is said to kill and one eye doll. Like, it sounds like us. It's like exactly what you would expect. I, I think, think it's pretty cool because people describe you guys in the most interesting ways. One of them was Strawberry Shortcake Meets Gore. <laughs> and another one was Valentine's Day Meets Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about that? Because I think it's pretty awesome that you can relate to contrasting ends of the spectrum and most people in between, obviously. Um, I don't, I don't know. It just kind of comes out that way. I'm not really sure how I feel about it or how that happens. I, I just kind of, I guess that's just, that's our dynamic, you know? I don't know. Well, I love the theatrical <laughs> energy you guys put into it. And you guys use, like, Japanese anime to help describe and... Um, I, is that something you know I think that's probably from? has been I lived in China for a while before I started performing and it probably rubbed off on me a little bit that's all I can really say I don't I don't you know watch a lot of anime or read a lot of manga or anything like that but um, I'm sure just being saturated in that world for a little while right before I started performing had something to do with what was I was like living in a whole different country and you know, probably not knowing the language at the time. And it was uh, different. <laughs> yeah, I had to pick up the language while I was there and find work. And um, so you speak Chinese? That's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I get. I can get by. I'm pretty rusty now. It's it's been over ten years, but um, you know, I can I can pull it out sometimes if I need it. <laughs> hey, that works. I wish I could speak Korean sometimes so that when they talk trash at the nail salons, I know what they were saying. Yeah, you're like, <laughs> I know what you're saying, sister. <laughs> what about you, Jason? What's this whole experience been like for you? Like, um, impossible? Yeah, it's been great. We, uh, you know, I started out being a producer um, and, and recording her albums. And then, um, you know, a couple of years later, I ended up joining the band full time. And I, I, feel, I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm technically the drummer in the band, but I think my role first role still is as the producer. So. I think you guys both play a lot of roles. I mean, there's only two of you, and your guys fill the room up like there's an entire band up there. Mm -hmm. Not to mention, like I said, the cool makeup and the whole backdrop and just the experience of it all. And 
you'll see, I don't know if you've ever played here before, but it's pretty intimate, and you can see the entire crowd, and you can see the mm -hmm. stage from anywhere. Yeah, we play it, this will be our third time playing it. Oh, right on. So yeah, I mean, you, you obviously know it's going to be a pretty cool night for you tonight. Hopefully, yeah. I you hope to so. have a pretty intimate crowd with people who are actually here to see you. Yeah. yeah. You know? I hope well, it's, it's going to be good. I mean, we never actually know when we're walking into a train wreck. Yeah. <laughs> it won't be. It wouldn't be as exciting, <laughs> though, if we So did. this is um, our... much here in this town, because it's the Bible Belt, if they are here, they want to come. Otherwise, I, like, really want it to come. Yeah. Because there's some shows I'm like, man, I want to go, but do I really feel like getting that? It's and and it's crazy rain monsoon. So hopefully some people will show up tonight. They'll show. Up tonight. I think they're used to that in Florida. Yeah, this is good, uh, <laughs> South Alabama. What <laughs> uh, I, I just want to mention though that it it has been really great playing for our audience. So um, you know. This is our third. We're co-headlining this with I Set to Kill. So uh, each night we trade off who goes last. But um, it's been really fun. Tonight. Um, it's set. Yeah, I Set to Kill is playing last tonight. Okay. And then we're playing last tomorrow night. For example, oh, and we played yeah. we played last so, last night. So we're both headlining every night. Yeah. yeah. And it's funny because it's it's like. Almost Our like, name is on the marquee. Almost like clockwork. Whoever is not playing last that night gets on the marquee. Yeah, it's for some reason they want to put both exactly, of us. Yeah. Let me tell but you we are equals. We're you totally go up into the green room. Open the conference room and then open the wall. Okay, it's an old Illuminati temple. Whoa! So, check that out. Like actually, Aaron from Jim and I found them. Yeah. I had to go downstairs to get my tripod, and they started exploring yeah. and found all these mason symbols and all this lonely stuff behind cool. them. I was like, oh, creepy. But anyways. Well, I just, and I just wanted to say that, you know, this is now our third headlining tour, so we did two before this of the whole U.S., and it's been really great um, playing to our audience, you know. It's always really cool to play to a whole new group of, you know, but brand people new people. Are actually here. But yeah. people that are here to see us and know our songs and sing along with it and everything, it's, it's really great. great yeah. Looking out and see all the them all wearing their one-eyed doll shirts. And There's yeah. a ton of them here. Yeah, so I, I love, love that. It. I love but that. But your look is so, so cool. How Thank could you. you not want to wear that? Thank you. We try to, you know, the the artwork and the, the t-shirts, you know, it's, 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 it's half fashion, so... I think, uh, you know, we try to make our stuff, like, if all of it is art, so. It's totally we try to make our shirts so that even if, you, if you've if you never heard of the band, that you still want to wear the shirt. You know, see that <laughs> so shirt and you're like, like, I don't know what that is, but I want really it, cool, you know. No matter what it is. Okay, a lot of our uh, sketches out there for sale that one of you painted. No, um, the, the artwork that's on the table is, um, I was actually just going to bring him up. Uh, there's an artist named Aaron Bordner. He's a comic book artist. He's amazing. And he started drawing fan pictures of us a couple years ago, or even a year ago. And we were like, whoa, who's this guy? I mean, because we get a lot of fan art, and so once in a while we're like, ooh, I'll contact that guy. So we, we contacted him. We're like, dude, can we use some of this? Like, we love this. How, how, can, we, how can we do this? And so he's like, yeah, sure. So he let us use one of his pictures on a shirt. That was the POW shirt. It's a Chinese song. And, um, and then we just, we hung out in Cleveland, all of us, on tour. And we started telling him uh, about the, the album that was going to be coming out, which was Witches, which is a concept album yeah, about the Salem recently, Witchcraft actually. Hysteria of 1692. Mm -hmm. And he is all about it. He knows everything about the Salem Witchcraft Hysteria. He's absolutely knew what was going on. And he wanted to do the artwork. So we're like, yeah. you know what? Cool. Do the artwork. So he did. He busted out the artwork for Witches and a bunch of t-shirts and posters and he made art for the table now we have a comic book with him like it's ridiculous so so we've done a whole bunch a lot of what you're seeing out there is aaron bordner artwork so if we, what i know we can expect you guys to stay on tour because it's kind of who you are and what you love to do and obviously as long as we can record yeah, mm -hmm. um, we can, you know, as, as long as we're able to. You're doing NAM, correct? You're doing some sort of signing for like Revolver. Well, we, we, uh, we did that actually oh, did in that. January. Oh, NAM, okay. NAM was in January, yeah. Yeah, see, I was reading through real fast, and I was like, oh, this is cool, this is cool. And yeah, well, with um, uh, Kimberly has a uh, sponsorship with an amp company called Black Star, and oh, we make cool. really amazing amps, and um, and she did a signing with Lita Ford. <sighs> from the runaways and, and, and she's you know, awesome 
that was how that was a cool experience. But I fangirled really bad. <laughs> we're in the autograph <laughs> line, you know, and I'm just like, you're so cool. I just really love you. <laughs> Like we, <laughs> it was cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah, she's so, great. One last thing is, enjoy the silence. Going to be your first single off of the new album. Um, I don't think it's going to be on an album. It's just we're just we kind of just did it, did it for the tour action. mainly. Yeah. We just did it for fun for the tour because we we love I Said to Kill and like why not? It's not really for an album or anything. Mm -hmm. But what we're doing with it is that um, everybody who has bought a ticket from our official site for the Visions tour and our VIPs are going to be emailed um, download codes to get that song like in the next few days. Yeah, hopefully in the next couple And then it'll officially be released May 1st just as a just as a single like on its own. I, I don't think we have an cool. album in mind for and it. And by the way guys you can purchase which is it is out on Amazon yes. and all that stuff now. Yeah, if you just Google one eyed doll, it's gonna come up really. And and yeah, yeah you it's honestly, a great album. You can make it one word if you want to spell it correctly. Put a dash in between one eyed. Yes, yeah, you know. hyphens are. So important. you know, it's up to you. Just you can find it any way you try. I promise, I've tried it all different ways, and it works. The no biggest the biggest dork in music. I come up right away. <laughs> Actually, if you if you Google uh, if you Google you image search if you Google bangies. if you Google image search drum dive Kimberly's butt comes up with this very first picture yes. <laughs> well, you saw it that's for yeah, that right yeah. look for that it's a <laughs> look for that butt on Google yeah. in, my, in my sweatpants check her butt out on Google so wearing my pajamas in the interview it's a black and yellow it's a black and yellow tutu she's wearing a black and yellow tutu and she's diving into me on the drum set <laughs> I mean that's a you know Kurt Cobain did drum dives like everybody just drum dive so that's a pretty big thing for you just google image search drum dive and her picture comes up. <laughs> that that's is pretty my, awesome my butt's on google yep <laughs> very first result try it my that's, boobs are well no I'm not it's been that way her boobs yeah. her boobs and my butt see if you can tell the difference yeah you know <laughs> We can tell totally. black right now, so you really can tell the difference. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I mean, you know. Right, yeah, you know, difference. like, let's see. Do you think we can compare boobs and butt? Yeah, they're about the same size. <laughs> <laughs> hey, my boobs are the same size as Kimberly's booty. <laughs> On that note, I think I'm going to let you guys get dressed uh, and practice your acoustic. Yeah, and so you shouldn't play in sweatpants today. No, I think, I mean, you're gorgeous, don't get me wrong, but I think I love it when you get all dressed up and like oh, all the flowy stuff on stage. I would die. You inspired me. I have That'd all this flowy stuff. stuff on right now. Really? Like, oh, I love flowy stuff, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's beautiful. It's like, it goes in the front and the back. Ooh, I would so wear this on stage. It's cute. If you want to grab it, you can. It's just, <laughs> yeah. it's long all the way. It's going yeah. to split up the sides. I just nice. have it kind of tight in the front. I have a dress that's similar to that. It's that, that, um, flowy mm -hmm. one. Yeah. New fashion for stage, yay! Have you worn that on this one yet, have you? I haven't. I haven't been. Hey, you should wear that tonight. I think you should. Um, I'll try. I'll, if 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 I can rock it, I'll try. I'll if not, and you want to borrow this, let me know. I'll like, I'll hook you up with this. Because <laughs> like I said, it, it is long all the way, Thank and it's slid on each side, and you yeah, can tie it and it and all kinds of crazy. It probably pranks. wouldn't survive the show. It's, it's, it's who cares? <laughs> so it's a shirt. <laughs> And I can always say she wore my hair on stage. So right. yeah. I can never actually wear really nice things on stage because it just gets trashed. Yeah, I, I, I gave up on wearing good stuff to concerts a long time ago because mm -hmm. I, yeah, you know. Don't wear something yeah. you don't want a whole beer poured onto or yeah. ripped in the exactly audience. the window. <laughs> Get my footprint on it right here. Uh, or, or her butt print. You my butt know. print, yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I cannot wait to see you for the third time tonight and get some pictures. And thank you for this interview. And thank you to your awesome publicity company, Concrete Marketing, for coming up. Hi, Ashley. We love you. Yes, Ashley, you rock. Any um, but you want to say goodbye? To, like shout outs to fans, family, friends, anybody special? Uh, I'm gonna shout out our super fan. Jersey Sobsky, who uh, really helped promote the show, he's yeah. been a, he's been on Team One Eyed Doll for years now, and he went he printed up himself three thousand 
flyers, full color flyers, and put them out all over town to help. Yeah, I haven't seen them. Really cool, dude. I've been hearing about these flyers. Yeah, so thanks. Well, make sure she saves the flyers. Oh yeah, we'll get we'll have some after the show. Well, he gave us the excess flyers to use as autograph cards or whatever. So grab one. They'll probably be at their merch booth. Definitely. We'll go back in and recheck out the merch booth. I've heard that they're pretty cool. I've seen some cool stuff on your merch table. Yeah. We got things. Well, we're going to go enjoy the show, and we will talk to you later.